guys, the Super Review Show here for another editorial video. This editorial will consist of comparing, in a brief condensed version, of comparing Star Trek to Star Wars. There's not too many videos of this on YouTube, and I figured I'd get to take a crack at it. So overall, I just, this is just my overall impressions of both franchises and how they relate, how they differ, and what people think of both. That's pretty much what you're going to get out of this video, so stick around. Here we go. The first things first, Star Trek. Star Trek came first, as much as all the Star Wars fans have to against Star Trek or have beef with it, it came first. It was the, the granddaddy of the science fiction television shows. This show was a pioneer show in the mid, late, late 60s. It dealt with race, class structure, and it dealt with, um, you know, uh, race, class structure, forgive me. Uh, race, class structure, it dealt with... Um, women, it dealt with, it, and it basically, because overall the show itself was a futuristic version of what Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, thought of for the future. He, this is what he thought of. There are episodes that had, as I said, race, had had diversity. I just saw an episode just now before I started recording this video. I rewatched an episode, excuse me, I watched it for the first time. Uh, the episode, I don't remember the exact name of the episode, it was season three of the original series. And it had to do with the black and white characters. There's only two of them left because the their planet got erased because of hate and the, how much they all hated each other. Because all because one person had white on white on their half and black on the other half and vice versa. And those two halves hated each other. It reminded me so much of a book that I used to read when I was younger, called um, a Dr. Seuss book called The Sneeches. This book dealt with oh you have a star in your belly, but I want to start in my belly because I'm different. And and then the machine came through. If you know what I'm talking about, good for you. I'm not going to get too much into that, though. Because this is about Star Trek and Star Wars and not the Sneetches. <laughs> um, but basically, it developed diversity. This episode that I just saw, just now, just it dealt with so much of differences and how to celebrate. Just because you're similar with me doesn't mean you're the same. Um... Just because, oh, one half is white, one half is black, and one half is black, and one half is white, whatever. Like, it didn't matter. You're, you're, they're still a part of that race. And eventually, at the end of, towards the end of the episode, you find out that they're the only two left of their kind. And their race gets destroyed um, because of hate. Because, oh, I hate you. And, and that just, to me, that was so much less science fiction and so much less science fact and all that stuff. It was just more about humanity. It showed a Star, Star Trek in the 60s, in this particular the original series. Um, as well as Next Generation as other shows as well. They showed diversity, they showed respect, they showed race, and they showed things about Earth in particular. And I loved that stuff. I haven't seen that. I, I, this is my first time I've been watching the original series for for the first time in a long time. And I, as I'm older now and all that stuff since I first watched it, and I'm like, this is really at far ahead of its time stuff. Way, ahead, way more ahead than the 60s and then it was first made. Wasn't the visual effects? It was about the stories of Kirk, Spock, and Bones, and how they dealt with everything to do with their time and how people dealt with each other. I mean, how could we forget the episode where Spock and uh, Lieutenant Nahora kiss? The first on-screen ever interracial kiss was on Star Trek. What? It's true though. It really was. Go back and look up that episode. It was, it was Spock has human half his feelings for Lieutenant Nahora and onward um, and so forth. And history was made. Um, but like overall, I just love Star Trek, and bi and basically, so yeah, Star Trek came first. Then came the movies of Star Trek, and here's why Star Trek the motion picture is called and was made a motion picture. See, Star Paramount was developing a new series of Star Trek in the late seventies. They were gonna Star Trek was gonna be called Star Trek Phase Two. And it was going to be like, they're in the future a little bit more. Kirk, Spock, and Bones, and the whole cast were going to return. Leonard Nimoy was skeptical, because I don't want to be typecast as this guy. And, um, and what happened? And they were already in the process of building the Enterprise for the show. What happens in May of 1977? Star Wars comes out in theaters. And in fact, I saw an interview recently with Leonard Nimoy from 2005. Leonard Nimoy said he even saw Star Wars in theaters, and then he immediately got calls from Paramount saying, hey, do you want to come back for a motion picture of Star Trek? You know, why not? 
the, the direct, it's no false news, it's nothing fake, I'm telling you. Star Trek, the motion picture, and the reason why we have Star Trek movies is because of Star Wars. That is fact. Go look it up. It's 100% fact. Um, and to be honest, I've heard stories about their Star Trek Phase 2 show in the late 70s, and, there, and a lot of people, like, some people read, like, oh, we don't want the scripts anymore, we're just here, you can read it. They were bad. <laughs> The show, that second show that never happened was pretty bad. But we did get other shows of Star Trek down the line. We got Next Generation, which was fantastic. I just watched a couple episodes before I started this video as well. We got Star Trek uh, Voyager. We got Enterprise. We got Deep Space Nine, which was like a big thing for a lot of Trekkie fans. Um, apparently they liked this one a lot. and I've, I've yet to go into it. I've yet to watch any episodes of it. Hear me out. But I do know that there are certain aspects that caught my interest of her learning about this show and learn, learning, hey, you know, I would love to watch the Dominion War of, I think what, this is season four or five, you got to get into that, but that's like six seasons of it, the last one from like 96 to, I looked it up on IMDb, from 96 to 2001. Um, so Star Trek got like really, there was a lot of content of Star Trek out there in like the late 80s into the 90s because of Next Generation and also the six movies with the original crew. So, and then Enterprise came out in 2001. They canceled that because, to be honest, I think that the, the Paramount well ran dry of Star Trek. So it took someone, I know a lot of people watching this video who are diehard, pure Star Trek fans hate this or may not like it or whatever. But the fact is that J.J. Abrams' 2009 reboot film, without that movie, Star Trek would be a dead-in-the-water franchise. It would have no fans. It would, it would be like the same people watching, the same content over. It took someone like J.J. Abrams to reboot the franchise. Yes, a lot of people didn't like that. But, and then again, I love, I love that, that whole series of the Kelvin timeline. I love it. Fight me. Don't actually fight me. But like... I love that franchise, that run of the series so much. Be 2009 was unbelievable. I watched that movie at least. I don't rewatch movies a lot, but I rewatched it probably five times, six times. It's that good. Into Darkness, I know a lot of people have beef with it. I don't care. It was a great, fun, entertaining, regular audience, casual Star Trek fan uh, movie. I loved it to death. I did not see it in theaters, though. It pissed me off, though. I didn't miss it. Um, but Beyond... In 2016, how the frick could you not like Beyond? It was a less action. It was action, but it wasn't like it was less action and more story, and that's what it needed at this point in the franchise. Justin Lin, when they first said Justin Lin of Fast and Furious, I'm like, I don't like Fast and Furious at all. I really don't. I hate the franchise to, to death. But I will acknowledge that Justin Lin did a fantastic job of taking this franchise to the next step. And making the the story of how the, the Enterprise goes to like Yorktown and they're on their five year mission, it was brilliant. I think I gave the movie like a nine point five out of ten. And I don't go that high, but I'm telling you, Beyond was that good of a movie, and I loved it so much. And I'm not a diehard like Star Trek fan. I'm not a diehard Trekkie, but that movie to me was so much fun and so entertaining to see Kirk, Spock, Bones, all of them um, on the screen together. It was fantastic. That being said, I'm really excited for Star Trek 4. Can't wait to see it. I'm so... I want them to greenlight three of these films today. <laughs> like, they... The direction they're going with the new Kelvin timeline and stuff is brilliant, and I love it to death. And also, I, I can't really comment on Picard or Discovery, but I'm glad they revisited Picard in a sense. Because, uh, let's face it, he's like one of the best Star Trek captains. He's some, hey, some people say he's better than Kirk. So that's that. I, mean, I haven't seen Star Trek Picard, so because I don't want to pay for CBS All Access, but that's me. Uh, Discovery, I heard, is fantastic and all this stuff. But, and they're going to greenlight, they put a Nickelodeon show, Star Trek Lower Decks. So without the 2009 reboot, you would not get these certain great, really quality content shows of Star Trek. Or Picard, or Patrick should even come back, you know? Anyways, I digress. Star Trek, that's that argument. Star Wars, I briefly mentioned about how. You know, Star Wars directly affected and made Star Trek a motion picture franchise. That's completely true. Look it up. Star Wars was a cultural behemoth of a movie. And George Lucas said it himself. Yeah, I, uh, he's gone on record and said, I literally thought it was going to flop. I really thought that this movie was going to flop. 
Um, then again, we got The Empire Strikes Back, one of the best sequels of all time, one of the best sequels ever, one of the best movies ever. Fantastic film, Darth Vader. The good guys lose. Oh my god! Like, it's ridiculous. Empire Strikes Back, get on it. If you have never seen any of the Star Wars movies, get on it. Watch episodes 4, 5, and 6. Excuse me, A New Hope. Excuse me, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. I'll get to that right now. Uh, and Return of the Jedi, of course. Look, Return of the Jedi is one of my favorite endings of any trilogy ever. Personally, I love it to death. I think they've nailed the ending. It's a trap! Like, that whole thing. And the cultural impact of Star Wars was huge right then and there. But also, Star Trek... I'll get to that. I'll get to both in a second. But while Star Trek, like it's Star Wars in '77, '79 was the motion picture of Star Trek. Um, Star Empire Strikes Back was 1980. 1982 was Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, which was a lot of the fans were like, "Why is the Enterprise fighting anyone? There's a space opera out now." Wrath of Khan is the best Star Trek movie out there. That's true. You can't deny that. Return of the Jedi comes out. Great conclusion to a three-film arc. Everything. I love it to death. Love it. Ewoks, best part. Fight me. That you can. Um, Star Wars, to me, is... Like, I, I mentioned with Star Trek, it's about race, Star Trek's about race relations and you know, how they... Specific things about Earth. Star Wars, to me, is pure entertainment. Um, Star Wars is such a f- behemoth franchise, too. Um, they nailed, like... George Lucas did everything wrong but everything loved everyone loved it and I will forever go on record and say that yes I love Return of the Jedi and I love Empire my favorite Star Wars movie my favorite 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 Star Wars movie if you ask me any time in the past it might have been different but as of now and probably moving forward it is Star Wars in 1977 and I don't really call it A New Hope to be completely honest with you I don't like calling it A New Hope um, because in a sense, George Lucas made the, a standalone movie. If you really think about it, George Lucas put a stand released a movie, and then they made The Empire Strikes Back. And then they, you know, and then they made a sequel to it. But like, like this movie is a standalone film. It ends with them getting the medals. Yay! You know, the ending there, with um, the, the um, Chewbacca and Han Solo and you know Luke getting the medals. This like, it's. It's a perfect standalone movie if you really think about it, and it's so much more. And the force, and like, and there, there was no mention of stuff prior in a sense. Like all that prior stuff came with Empire Strikes Back. Where did Darth Vader come from? I'm your father, and all that stuff. There's a great video online. I have to mention this really quick. Of someone, I, I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. In 1980, <laughs> took a video camera to the theater. I don't know how you get a giant camera in the movie theater back in 1980. But hear me out. This is very funny. It's a video online. I'll leave a link for it in the description of this video so you all can check it out. It's a 1980s cinema reaction to that scene where Luke's like, you, they told me you killed my father. And he's like, no, I am your father. And the audience is like, you got to remember too. This is back when it first came out. And the audience was like, <gasps> like the, and the guy recorded it. It's really funny. And you got to look it up online. I'll leave a link for it in the description of the video so you all can um, check that out. But yeah, like, like I said, a stand a standalone film. New Hope is a standalone film to me. Empire Strikes Back, one of the best sequels ever. Return of the Jedi, a very strong, strong, strong sequel. I so some people don't like it, but I love it personally. And that trilogy is very sacred to me. The whole thing. Um, the prequels. I'm not even going to talk about it because they still suck. <laughs> um, the prequels to me. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit, but. Um, there was this enormous amount of time from 1983 to 1999 where we didn't see anything with Star Wars except books and comic books and toys and whatever. But, uh, and the ho- holiday special. I'm not going to bring it up though. Don't worry. <laughs> Life Day. Um, Star Wars Episode 1 Episode one comes out in 99. Uh, Phantom Menace. And oh my god, it made a billion dollars despite how bad it was because it was coming off of Return of the Jedi. It was ridiculous. Like, jar, everything from Jar Jar to just, just overall, I was, I, listen, I'm not that old as you can tell. I mean, well, you know, whatever. Right? But basically, those films, the uh, uh, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones are a joke to me. Complete joke. I don't care how old, I'm not going to tell you all that. But like, I'm, 
I'm under 25, let's put it that way. <laughs> I hate those movies so much because they're not Star Wars. They are, they, they, there are parts of them I really love. The pod race, the actual fight scenes between, like, like certain elements of Star Wars Episode the, uh, Star Wars Episode 1, the, the Phantom Menace, um, are great. The pod race is brilliant, brilliant directing and um, quality and sound and technical to a technical aspect it's fantastic go back and watch it you know what i mean attack of the clones i like sand <laughs> a pathetic joke and also star wars people like they cast actors that were super famous obviously samuel L. jackson was in there kind of took away the magic for me um then the best one of the three and it's still not great but it's probably the best of the three is revenge of the sith revenge of the sith to me is a fantastic no, I said, eh. it's really good for what it is. Yes, it's the best prequel, but I feel like it gets clustered a little bit too much with the prequels. Um, it's it's actually a very good movie on its own. The last twenty minutes are great. Like, but the, <laughs> give it up, Anakin. I have the high ground. Ooh, cringe. Um, so bad. I like, anyways, that forever, not good. But overall, it did show how Star Wars came to be. Darth Vader showed up with Luke. Uh, I'm sorry, not Darth Vader. Luke Skywalker got dropped off on Tatooine. They become a princess. You know all that. The family tree. Force Awakens comes out. I'm not gonna. By the, I, I know I'm going a long time on this, but hear me out. Force Awakens comes out. Last Jedi comes out. Episode nine comes out. Uh, Rise of Skywalker, and it closes out the Skywalker saga. Because basically, the overall arc of Star Wars is the Skywalker saga. It's a nine film epic about this one family line. Of how good and bad affects the family. It's about a family line. And there's so much more d depth to it than a lot of people give credit to. Like, oh, it's just a Star Wars movie. If you go look at it from, like, a perspective of... Uh, it's a family line aspect. Like, like mm, Earth history. But, like, you know, like... The, the Chinese uh, ancient dynasties had families. George Lucas took all these elements and made it into a science fiction franchise. Thank you. Um, but, like, Luke's Anakin to Luke... To Kylo Ren or Ray, I forgot a fan. But anyways, it's about these characters, and I said this on a my thoughts on video not too long ago, where these uh, French uh, uh, these films, these trilogies have their own set of characters. So episode ten, eleven, and twelve will probably not have Ray, Poe, and, and Finn, and I completely love that. I love that they're, gonna, they're gonna probably going in a different direction. So, and look, Star Wars to me, Star Trek is pure science. It, it, they're both science fiction fantasy. They really are, you have to admit. Yes, one is more science fact, but they're both science fiction fantasy. Just, that's what they are. Um, but Star Trek, to me, has is about Earth and their cultural stuff and how they can affect and make a difference in the universe, in a sense. Like, do different galaxies and figuring out what to do. Star Wars is pure entertainment. Star Wars is pure entertainment. Absolutely pure entertainment. Um, with lightsaber battles and the, the fact that they could have good guys and bad guys in novel worlds, video games, and now The Mandalorian and other TV shows that are going to come out soon. That, to me, is shows how a behemoth property it is. It's the fact that, like, Disney said, it's just so untapped potential then, then they made the, they bought the, they're going to make a ton of stuff out of it now. So it's crazy. Star Trek, to me... And Star Wars, like, yes, there's this big rivalry amongst fans. I feel like the people are like, well, live long and suck it. You know, you Darth Vader loser, like, whatever. Like, that was really cheesy, I'm sorry. But, like, overall, you should love both. And I'm not here to pick one over the other. I'm going to leave it completely up to you guys in the comment section below. Leave it up to you. Because, to me, I love both as much, as much as I love Star Wars and as much as I love Star Trek, I love both because they're both, to me at least, science fiction entertaining properties that are in different styles of science fiction. One's about this ship of people who are sent off on a crew and, you know, and they're sent to go and investigate this galaxy thing. That's more... That's I love that. But at the same time, I also love this thing right here where it's like, oh, you know, there's a... You know, you know, the, the X-Wings are going to kill off the Death Star, and, like, I love both. They can coexist, ladies and gentlemen. They can coexist. I'm telling you. I'm not making this up. 
Totally serious. <laughs> Anyways, what do you think about anything I just said? Jump down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for sticking around for a 20 minute video as well. You guys are the best. Um, overall though, like, let me share your thoughts of Star Trek, Star Wars. I'm not going to tell you which one I pick over the other because I don't really have one that picks over the other for me. I love both. They're both entertaining and they're both super fun. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. But please share this video, sound off in the comment section below, whatever you want to do. But for all of your editorial videos, keep it locked on the Superview Show. Live long and prosper.